All right, let's look at installing and configuring a Linux DHCP server. So I have a server right here, and I'm going to configure it for DHCP, so it's running as a DHCP server. First of all, you need to have the software installed. So yum install DHCP. This will get you the server. Um, the server is pretty good, but it requires you to have a static IP address. So a lot of people like to use DHCP to get their IP address. And that doesn't work if you're a DHCP server because you have to serve the address and you need to have a static IP address. So I have a static IP address. So I D A E D D R. You can see that my IP address is right here. 10.230.150.1. All right. And I want to give out IP addresses in a similar range. So I'm going to go in and configure it. So the configuration file for the DHCP server is in the etc directory, etc DHCP. And you can see that there are a couple of base configuration files. The one we're going to look at is the dhcpd.com file. So I do nano on dhcpd.conf. And I can see that it has all this information about examples. I don't really care about this, but you can go look at that file, copy it over, make changes. Um, it's a nice file. Now, I am going to be serving the example.com domain. So I want to tell it the domain name is the example.com domain. You make sure you put semicolons at the end of every line. Domain name servers. So I need to tell it the servers that they're going to be using. So all the machines in this domain, what servers they're using. I can tell them why they're using Google servers for their DNS. Then I decide how long is the lease going to be for. Lease time. So my default lease, let's say I want it to be for one hour. So 3,600, 3, I think it's an hour, yep, seconds. And I decide how long the max lease is for. So max lease time. And let's say that the maximum lease, we'll just give some large number because they get to renew their leases again and again. All right, so now I decide um, for the subnet that I am in, I need to tell it what subnet I'm in, first of all. So I'm in the 10.238.0.0. After I tell it the subnet, I need to then tell it the mask. So my net mask is 255.255.0.0 and then inside of this little definition I need to tell it information about what I want to do. So if I'm going to be giving out IP addresses in this range then I would do the range and I would pick the range of IP addresses I'm giving out. So maybe I want to give out 10.230.150.1 10.230.150.199. That'll give out IP addresses, the whole 100 IP addresses from 100 to 199. Just semicolon at the end. And then I tell it what their gateway is, their default gateway. So option routers 10.230.0.0.0. Router, their default gateway to get out. And this right here is all I need to do to set up the base DHCP server configuration. Um, this should be giving out leases to all these machines, anything that wants to get an IP address. All right, so now I will exit out of here, save that, and I can go ahead and start the DHCP D service. Clear that. I do system CTL. Start DHCPD and the service starts up. If I want it to be starting automatically on boot time, I can enable it as well. 
which will make it so that it will start automatically. All right, now you can also go in and uh, modify any firewall rules if you want. Um, so let's do that. Firewall CMD add service equals DHCP add the service. Now, if I wanted to make it permanent, I have to make sure I also add the permanent line. Permanent, permanent, permanent. Now, the firewall is configured so that clients can communicate to my DHCP server and my DHCP server can hear it. I'm running my DHCP server. Now it's time to go over and take a look at a client machine. So I clear this right here and go to a client machine. Actually, before I do that, let's uh, do a tail minus F on my var log messages. All right, so now we can see the server's running. Um, and this thing right here with the minus F will allow me to keep getting more information as log messages come in. So if the client decides to request an address, I will see it. All right, now I'm going to client. So here is a client machine. There's no GUI here, so I have to manually configure the IP address and stuff. <clears throat> so if I go to the ETC system con or config network scripts directory, I can take a look, and there are a whole bunch of files in here. At the very top one up here, the IF. CFG-ENS32 is my interface to get out. So I want to go and modify that interface. So do nano on the IFCFG-ENS32. Now, if you have a GUI, then you can go in and configure that. That's fine as well. But I just want to show you how to do it with um, a command line. So I can see that my type is Ethernet. My boot protocol is none. So I'm going to change my boot protocol from none to DHCP. Uh, my default route, yeah, leave that alone, leave this alone, leave these things alone, leave that alone. On boot, yes, our MAC address is fine. I don't want to use this IP address right here because that would be bad. I don't want this prefix. I don't want the gateway. I don't even want this DNS. Um, I can leave the domain as, as it is. Um, and this would be pretty good. The last thing I'd want to change though, is I want to change it so that it is not using the, um, uh, network management stuff. What happens with the, uh, network mm, management type stuff is that it will prevent me from actually making changes myself. And I don't want that. So I will see that. And M control equals no, I'm putting quotes for one. And this should allow me to be able to get DNS stuff working properly. So then I restart my uh, IP address, restart my network. And it should restart. And I type an IF config, and I can see I have an IP address that's in the range of IP addresses I'm trying to give out by my DHCP server. So I'll go back to the server. And you can see in the DHCP server, I can see that there was a DHCP discover that came from my client. This is the MAC address of my client. I offered them this IP address right here, the 10, 230, 150, 100 to the client. Then the client requested that IP address from me. And then I acknowledged the request and gave them the IP address. So that is the entire process right here for my discovery offer request and acknowledgement. And that's how you get a DHCP server working, configured and going.